<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, uh, Ake and I just finishing up the last uh, feeding on this farm. So we got here before the Arctic blast hit. <clears throat> we moved them in here last Monday. And this is the following Monday, the day after Christmas. And uh, it only got down to like 18 degrees last night. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you this big bottom out here where we did the lion's, the lion's share of unrolling. And it's windy. And I don't have a muffler or anything. Muffle the noise, this is real life. If it's too windy for you, turn the volume down a little bit, I guess. Anyway, I wanted to show you. So we were on here seven days including the piece I just came off of. And we were up on that hill there too for one day. We unrolled hay up there after we fed the stockpile. And the cows are uh, grazing down here on the very end. But uh, I tell you what, this bottom hit a home run. That day it was 30 below zero, that wind chill. These cedars absolutely saved us. Might call it an outdoor barn. But they were able to get in those cedars as a windbreak. And you come out here in the morning, they were quite comfortable. I mean, they were, they were all just hanging out. The wind was blocked. Of course, they were huddled up using each other's temperature to stay warm. And when we had unrolled hay out here after we fed them stockpile, this bottom is eight acres and we gave them eight one acre strips of grass. And so in the morning or in the evening, we give them an acre and then uh, in two bales, it was so cold. And then in the morning, they only got, in the morning they get three bales and no stockpile. So we're only giving them stockpile once a day to preserve the length of how long we could keep them here. Cause I mean, this, this is this was a home run. Um, our gra our uh, water supplies right there. See the cows going up to the pond. That's the dam. We've got one of those rock skirts up there, so they don't have far to go to get them a drink. And right here's the bedrooms out of the cedars, and then here's their feed. So they weren't expending a lot of energy walking from water to the bedding spot to where the, the forage was. But uh, Ike and I just gave them two bales and they'll be coming out of here tonight. And uh, we're gonna give them a pretty good sized area up around the old house site up here. And uh, there's a pretty good stockpile up there. Probably not gonna feed any hay tonight. But uh, there's a bunch of them still in that far end up there. That was the last strip of stockpile we gave. And they're starting to migrate back to the hay now. Some are migrating up to that pond and getting them a drink. This is uh, manure pat after manure pat after manure pat. <laughs> I was telling Ike this morning, I said, how'd you like to have the job of going through here and having to count every one of these? It'd take you a while. There's probably 10,000 of them down here. But I'll tell you what, this spring when it gets warm all, and we get some rain, all this stuff's gonna go in to the soil and we are gonna grow so much grass and not have to use any nitrogen fertilizer, <clears throat> which we don't use anyway, but I think that's a pretty good way to go broke. Putting nitrogen fertilizer on your pastures to grow grass, when you can do it by moving and rotating your animals and using their manure and their urine to grow the grass back. That's called regenerative. So that the cows are basically regenerating themselves because they're producing a calf each year inside them. 
these cows are bred back and uh, they still have last year's calf or i'm sorry it's not last year yet is it they still got the spring calves in here with them um we haven't weaned heifer calves for going on 20 years we just let the cows wean them leave them on them in the winter time and now the bull calves are still in here too but they'll come out march 1st and by doing that they don't go back in until July 1st. So you count that March, April, May, June, that's four months. And if you, you count back from March four months, well, that's December, January, February, March. So those four months are guaranteed we're not gonna be calving during the winter. Folks, you don't wanna calve in the winter time. You just don't wanna do that. You're fighting nature and you might get by with it if you've got a big barn and heat lamps and you want to go out there and lock them up at night and then you got to muck all that manure out of the barn and deal with scours and calves. It's just, when you take the cattle and calve them when they're not on green grass and it's warm in the spring, you're fighting nature and she's going to kick you in the teeth. Sooner or later, you may get by with it for a while, but she's going to kick you in the teeth. You're going to have an outbreak of scours, kill a dozen calves. The scours just prolific, are prolific in barns where you don't have sunlight and, and clean ground. And it just spreads, you know, and it's a bad deal. <clears throat> you get scours in calves, sometimes you just can't. You can do all the doctoring you want and they still die. So don't do that. Keep your cattle out on grass, on clean ground, and you're not going to have any scour issues. The other thing I will say is you've got to be the predator. Um, I haven't, there's maybe one or two cows in here that have dropped a little condition in that cold snap. The rest of them look really good. And if they don't pick back up, well, then those would be cows that we would be looking at selling and getting rid of because they're not, they're not performing in this environment. You know, they've got to be able to perform without being pr uh, propped up with grain. Because we are 100% forage. It's either hay or, or grass here. We don't feed. We just don't feed any grain. And if you're going to feed grain, you're not going to make any money. But these cows aren't very hungry this morning. I can tell you why. See those four over there by that woods? They're just, they're just walking around checking it out. They're not hungry. If they were hungry, they'd be over here on this hay. There's, we unrolled it. There's like six or eight windrows there. Plenty. They're just not very hungry. And that goes back to, you know, it's, it's already 22 degrees out here this morning. But boy, when it was... 15 below you didn't see that over there those cows were on that hay or on the stockpile and they're all staying really huddled up to use the heat from each other <laughs> they're like we want some more stockpile we want to graze this morning well you will tomorrow but you got a little stockpile right over there you can get over and eat that this morning and you'll get some more tonight so, yeah, I hope everyone had a, a really nice Christmas. I know we certainly did. We enjoyed our time with family and relatives and really had a, some wonderful uh, visiting and food and just it's nice to get away and, and enjoy time with people that you see and are related to, even if you're not related to them. It's just nice to uh, get away for a while and... Uh, yeah, that's awesome. So I'm going to get out of here, and uh, we've still got some chores to do this morning. Everyone have a great one, and uh, a happy new year. And uh, on the way out, if you'd hit that subscribe button, that'd be awesome. And uh, we'll see you down the road.